Today, the world is in crisis. We have an amazing amount of chronic disease happening on the planet, and one of the most potent, widespread pandemics that we're facing is diabetes. There's 246 million people today who suffer from diabetes. It's a major pandemic situation that we have to pay attention to. We are one of the sickest countries in the world. It don't have to be that way. Type 2 diabetes has tripled in the last 10 years. That's a lifestyle disease. That's all about what you're putting into your mouth. We have an unbelievable epidemic of diabetes in this country. The rates of diabetes are skyrocketing, and we have a, a, a parallel to the epidemic of obesity. We have an, the most overweight population ever in the history of the human race, and it's still growing fatter. I believe that the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over and over and expecting a different result. We have to do something completely different and innovative. This is the ghetto. This is it. This is Pimlico. This is where I used to live when I was a kid, actually. <laughs> I used to actually live in the other building down there, but this is where my sister lives. So hopefully she's in. This is my sister, Nicole. Hey, Lauren. I'm always checking on her to make sure she's all right. She's frying nuggets. That's a lot of grease. Good Lord. Be quiet. I guess the most interesting thing that happened to me in the last year is being diagnosed with diabetes. I've been uh, having to go to the bathroom a lot but I didn't know why. So I went to the emergency room and they checked my blood sugar. They told me that my blood sugar was at 1,200. Now, the normal range for blood sugar is about uh, 80 to 100. So I was far behind that range. When I went in, the doctor said, you should be dead. <laughs> it wasn't yet a possibility of dying. At 1,200, you should not, you should have something wrong. Well, my pills had, had one size, but when I'm ready to, ready to get eaten. Well, I need to get a refill tomorrow. I've always dreamed of living to 102, you know, that's one of my goals. So to hear that already so young, you've been diagnosed with something that has a major impact on your health, it, it took me for a loop and just made me think that there's so much more that I have to do and I shouldn't be thinking that I have a lot of time to do it. So <laughs> my main thing is just getting back healthy and making sure that I stay healthy. And so whatever it takes to get that, that done, that I'm willing to make that, uh, that sacrifice. Uh, as growing up, the Italian people were always manja, 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 eat, 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 because whenever they shared food with their family, it was a very, very precious thing. The greatest gift they could give is food to their family and their friends. One thing that's going to be an advantage and another one's a disadvantage, my wife's such a good cook. She cooks just like in the old country, and oh my God, Minnie Jean, you did yourself a lamb to die for. Oh, okay. About 10 years ago, I went to my cardiologist. I was having a little hypertensive problems. And he goes, hey, you're borderline diabetes. And I heard the word diabetes, no idea how devastating this is to your life. The consequences, my God, it affects every organ system and just your vision, your kidneys, uh, sexual dysfunction. The uh, other things with the neuropathy in the feet, uh, my feet slowly became numb one day. Got cold and chilled, so I grabbed a ceramic heater. Forty minutes later, I smell steak cooking. I tried to follow the smell, and I looked down at my feet, and my foot, and it was boiling and bubbling and cooking, <laughs> literally cooking. I cooked my foot. Just I've been a big eater, and, and uh, no controls on that, and uh, so the eating just pacifies me. Just it's a wonderful pacification thing. My grandmother raised me. My diet was whatever I wanted, you know, and it always entailed a dessert because that was my reward. Oh my gosh, my favorite are gyros. I love gyros. Come to me, baby. 
I like to eat. I like to satisfy whatever I feel. I didn't really have anyone to push me that much in the right direction. That's just so much that I want to do, but I'm, I'm being held back by first my diabetes and my health. I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't get to, I don't get to stuff. So I have a husband, his name is Ernest. My son Manny, he's 10. The members of my family are loving and strong and funny. Well, diabetes uh, affects me in a lot of ways. Physically, I'm not happy where I am. It just, I just want to get rid of it. Dear Heavenly Father, bless this food which you're about to receive. And we thank you for this day. And we love you. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Yeah. The only thing I do, I want is to watch my grandkids. I'd like to see them get big. And the way I'm going, if I don't do something about it, I'm not going to be around to see them. And Grandpa flips that. Then he puts his finger up there, like that. And that oh. hurt. And, and then I put, squeeze it, oh. so the blood comes out. And then I put it on here. And then the numbers come up there. 464. That is bad. Like my doctor told me, my diabetes is out of line. He says, you're going to die. You're killing yourself. He tell me what I had to do, but I didn't do it. I take nine other pills besides my insulin. No, I try to watch what we eat for him because uh, I buried one. I don't want to bury another one right away. So, of all the things that you take, orange juice puts it up there. Then why do you drink it? Oh, I love it. Nobody likes to. To be defeated, especially you know, in their own body, you know. My father was a diabetic. My brother's also a diabetic. Oh, and I have a sister that's diabetic. The way we ate may have contributed. Okay. Yeah. Now, push it in, Alex, please. Thank you, dear. You have to be careful because Grandma's sticky. I just want to get the paper. I live in the house with my disabled husband, Willie Mitchell, my daughter, and four grandchildren. It's pretty hectic at times. I've never really taken time for myself to people focusing on me. No, I've never had that. Um, I'm pretty much an all-American boy, you know, grew up with dirt on my knees and grass stains on my face, you know, that's, that's just how I grew up. I was a brat of the family because I'd always be fighting and they didn't realize till years later that it was my diabetes. Like, it's it just, I hated it, you know. I resented God for it. I think I still might sometimes. That's why I rebel. 27. Ah. Crazy. So I'm trying to quit drinking altogether, wondering if I'm ever going to actually be able to stop using alcohol forever, you know what I mean, because that's the hardest battle I ever fought. I'll probably live to like 50, that's what I think, but I might not, you know, I could heal. I might live longer or I might die tomorrow, I don't know. I really wanted to get off insulin. I, I hated taking, you know, stick yourself in the stomach and then it was just too much. So one day I'm surfing online and I go across Craigslist and I find that there's an advertisement.